Welcome back. In the last segment we saw implementations of two assignment operators for our class string. In this segment we are going to look at implementation of other operators. So first the square bracket or the indexing operator. Okay. So if we wish to access the individual characters of the stored character string we need to define this. Okay. So as we know if what has been written in the program is a 1, okay, this is read by C++ as a dot operator square bracket, okay. uh, operator square bracket operating on 1. Okay. So this operator must be overloaded okay. and that overloading is quite simple. Okay. So uh, the receiver has a certain string and we want character 1 from it and where is the string of the receiver? It is at a dot ptr. So we just have to get character 1 from a dot ptr that is about it. So we do not have to write a in this because the receiver is implicit. Okay. So this is going to be the receiver's ptr uh, and we are going to take a displacement of i from it. Okay. So that is about it. And notice that we are returning a reference. Okay. So we are returning a reference because that way we can change the character as well. So we would be able to write something like suppose we have a and a is pqr then we can write a of 0 equal to a of 1. Okay. So this a of 0 will also be translated or will also be interpreted by this operator. So this will return a reference to a0. Okay. So a0 is a vari variable and it will be a reference. So it will mean that variable itself. It will not mean the value. Okay. And so that variable itself will appear here so to say and therefore we can store into it. Okay. So that is why we are using a reference, we are returning a reference rather than a value. Okay. So if we do this, then if we have this defined and if we write this and we are allowed to write this, then this will cause A to become QQR. Okay. Now there is an interesting operator concatenation, so for which we are going to overload our plus. Okay. So we would like A plus B to mean the concatenation of A and B. Okay. So we must create a new string first of all on the heap and store the concatenation into it. Okay. So how does that work? Well, so we are going to return a string this time. Okay, so the result is going to be a string and our operator plus is going to be overloaded. Okay, so again let me just remind you a plus b becomes a dot operator plus of b. Okay. So therefore we need to redefine or we need to overload this function operator plus. So First we will create this string which is, which is going to eventually contain the result. Okay. And into that string we are going to store the result but this string has its own pointer and that pointer must point to the heap and how many elements, how long an array does it need on the heap? Well this array must contain the string from A as well as the string from B or looking at it here it should contain the string from the receiver as well as the string from the right hand side. Okay. So this space needed must be the length of the string pointed to by PTR as well as the length of the string pointed to by RHS dot PTR and a 1 so that we can append the null character to it. Okay. So we have allocated the need, uh, space needed by writing this new thing. And uh, now we just have to copy. So this S copy that we had earlier is going to copy uh, whatever is in the receiver into this result that we, the result area that we have created. Okay. This is created on the heap of course. Okay. And uh, then we have to copy the RHS string as well. Okay. So that same, uh, that, that same S copy is going to be used. But we have to tell S copy that look I do not want it copied 
from the very beginning as what this would be doing, but we want to copy it from index length of PTR. Okay? So, we want to copy from res dot PTR index length of uh, uh, length of PTR, length of the string that we just copied. Okay? We are going to call s copy, but this time we are going to give 3 arguments. So, this is the destination, okay? this is the source okay? what we want copied and this is the displacement in the destination from where the copying has to begin. Okay? And I, you can write this, but this function is also given in the book in that same chapter 15. And finally, res will be returned. So, the result of this will effectively be replacing this expression. Okay? So, this so there will be a temporary which will be replacing this and then you can do whatever you want with it. So, you might have c equal to a plus b so that then that temporary will be assigned to c. Okay? But this evaluation will result in a temporary which contains the concatenation. So, so that is it. So, that is the concatenation operator. Now, we need the destructor as well and we talked about it, but let us just, uh, just do this again. Okay? So, suppose we have this code which we had in the program that we had written. So, at this point string b is created okay? and at this point string b goes out of scope. So, when string b goes out of scope, C++ is automatically going to call the destructor tilde string. Okay? So, tilde, well I should, I should really say the, the destructor in the string class. Okay? So, uh, uh, that will be that will get called okay? and it will be called on the receiver. So, it will be tilde b actually, the call will look like tilde b. So, what do we want happening over here? So, by the, by the way there is a default destructor and the default destructor does nothing and we are going to change it. Okay? So, we should delete p dot ptr to prevent memory leaks. Okay? So, how do we do this? So, um, uh, our our uh, class is going to contain this okay the, our our destructor is going to have uh, delete ptr inside it that's about it okay so this is what will happen if b goes out of the scope over here then it is as good as calling tilde b and this is the call that is going to happen so this is the body of the call and B is going to be the receiver and so PTR, the PTR of B is going to be deleted. So, whatever memory B was pointing to will get deleted exactly as we wanted. Okay? And as I said earlier this works even if PTR is null okay? and in, the, in this case the delete does nothing. We also need to write the copy constructor. Okay? So, Remember that in our program we were calling some function f with a string object a as the argument. Okay? So, how does C++ handle it? Well, the copy constructor is called by C++ to copy a string object to the parameter. So, this string object is copied to the parameter in f okay? and that copy is a little bit of a special copy. It is not just like an ordinary assignment. It is a little bit speci more special than that and we will see in what way it is special. And therefore, C++ has a notion of a copy constructor. Okay. So, the copy constructor looks like this. So, it is a, it's a constructor and therefore, there is no return type. Okay. And it is constructing. So, here we are going to use it to construct that parameter in f. Okay. And uh, so, it is going to take one argument which is the object from which we are supposed to make the copy. So, in this case argument is going to be A and RHS is really going to be A when this code gets executed. And the receiver will be the variable which is the para corresponding parameter in F. Okay. So, uh, what happens? Well, PTR which is the receiver's PTR. Okay, is going to be assigned is, is going to is going to be made to point to 
the string that RHS contains. So first it must allocate, we must allocate some memory okay? and that is what we are doing over here and its length should be adequate for getting a copy of this. So RHS dot PTR length plus 1 for the sentinel null. Okay? After that we are going to make uh, a copy, okay? the actual copy and that is about it. Notice that we did not delete PTR as we deleted in the case of the other assignment uh, operations because this PTR is the PTR of the parameter of f okay, which is of type string. Okay. So that is why we are copying this argument to that parameter. Okay. But this parameter is just being constructed as we speak and therefore it is not pointing to anything at all. So we do not have to delete PTR. Okay. And likewise there is nothing to be returned because this is a constructor and so in the assignment we were returning something so the code uh, looked a little bit more complex but here there is no there is no chaining that that we could be that that, that there may that, that might be needed okay and therefore it's just going to be copying from uh, copying from this a to the parameter inside f and just this is necessary. So this is the core code of the assignment statement but before that we had to delete PTR in the assignment statement and then we had to return the object, this object itself. But both of these things are not necessary as far as this constructor is concerned. Yeah. And, and yes, so this is the code which is used to copy um, an argument to a parameter. Okay. But C++ uses the same code to copy uh, a result back from the call function to the calling function and that same copy constructor is used and this code will work for that purpose as well. Okay? All right, so what have we discussed in this segment? So we have given the definitions of all member functions needed to perform assignment, passing and returning from functions, concatenation, etc. for our string objects. Okay. And these pieces of code should be inserted into the definition of the string. So next we will use this class to solve the problem of storing names okay. and we will have concluding remarks for our entire lecture. But before that we will take a short break. <laughs>